Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose. In today's message, we're going to be focusing on that, you know, God uses whoever he wants um, for his will. Um, you know, God can use whoever he wants for his will. Um, you know, when we look at the Bible, uh, God uses everybody. You know, he uses kings, queens, he uses servants, he uses slaves. Uh, he uses the honorable, uh, he uses the disgrace. Uh, he uses the things that are not and the things that are. Um, he uses everything. He uses animals. Um, when God's will is in the mix, you know, uh, God's will uh, governs everything. Nothing can break God's will. You know, when God has his arms stretched out, nothing can turn it back. You know, uh, when God has purpose, nothing can thwart him. Think about Abiknezer. Think about Pharaoh. These men uh, were raised up, and they thought they were they were gods. They thought that they were ultimate. But God has always been ultimate. Kingdoms come and kingdoms go, but God's will always stands strong. A lot of people don't understand that. Even in a modern day, in the, in the era that we live in today, God can use drug dealers, criminals, uh, people that are, people that are not, for his will to be done. A lot of people don't think about that, but, but God still moves in his ways. That's what makes him God. He's omnipotent, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent. No, nothing, no one can bend his will. You know, think about the story of Joseph. His brother, his brothers thought that they were that they were done with him, that he would never amount to anything. His brothers sold him. You know, Joseph. You know, from his father's house, uh, from from the hole that he was in, to Potiphar's house. You know, he was a a slave, a servant. You know, he belonged. He was property to Potiphar. But God raised him up to be the right hand, the second in command in Egypt. And the Bible even tells us that, uh, you know, God says that he, he, he took Pharaoh and, and raised him up just so that his will could be done. I mean, God shows his complete power. God takes frogs. God takes, you know, all these little tiny creatures and he creates armies out of them. And he creates the plagues of Egypt. I mean, think about that. God has the armies of heaven at his disposal. And yet he took these little tiny creatures to bring Egypt down to its knees. I mean, that, that, is, that is power right there. The things that God can do when his will, you know, his will moves. When his will moves everything bows down and obey. God can use you. God can use your family. God can use your story. Some people think that God can't use their story. God can use your story for his will to be done. I mean, think about how many people messed up or, or went down the wrong way. Think about um, uh, David and Bathsheba. Think about um, Solomon. Think about um, Samson. All these people, God used their stories for his glory. He took all these people, he changed them, he sanctified them, he gave them new hearts, and God is still moving throughout the world today. God, you know, God, God loves the world so much that, that he, he crucified his own son on a cross. And a lot of people think that, that God doesn't move like this anymore, but he still does. I think there's a lot of people in the media and a lot of people in the world, a lot of people that 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 are on the, the that, that that they're on the rim. You know, they're 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 seeking for something, and that thing that they're seeking for is God. There are people that God uses that, you know, for, for a lot of us, it's, it's unimaginable. It's like, you know, why did God use this person? Well, God is God. He can use whoever he wants. 
the last person you, you, you would think that God would use for, for his purposes are the exactly the type of people that he uses for his purposes. The love of God is so great that it can save anyone. The most disgraceful. I mean, think about Paul. Paul was killing Christians. Think about all the prostitutes in the Bible that literally, um, you know, that, that were considered to be the, 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 the soap scum of society. But God, his grace... His grace overcomes all. His love overcomes all. There's no story. There's no human. There's no. There's nothing that you can do that God's love cannot save you from. That's why Christ died. The worst of all sinners. The worst of all violators. The most criminal of, of sinners. God can use them. God can change their hearts. God can change their being. God can make them new and use them for his glory, for his purposes. So John 3.16, I mean, a lot of people know it. John 3.16 tells, tells us that, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whom shall ever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I mean, the Bible tells us that clearly, that, that God loved the world, every human being, no matter what sin, no matter what they've done. I mean, think about Sodom and Gomorrah. God offered Sodom and Gomorrah grace. He offered them a way to, to be saved. I mean, he was only looking, I mean, Lot, his wife, and, and his two daughters were already in, in, in that 10 that God wanted, you know, 10 righteous people, 10 people uh, to turn away from their sins that God was looking for. Four, you know, Lot, his wife, and his two daughters. God was looking for six, just six more. And Sodom and Gomorrah would have been saved. And, and Sodom and Gomorrah had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people living in it. God offered Sodom and Gomorrah grace. That's how powerful the love of God is. Some people think that God doesn't love them. Of course God loves you. He literally asks you to, to seek him and you will find him. If you seek God, you will find God. That's, that, that's what Jesus tells us to do. A lot of people that that the devil, one of the things that he does, he makes you question God's love for you. That's what he did to Eve. You know, he he used he used the words and and try to change them, try to um, maneuver them in a certain way to to deceive you. I mean, he tried to do the same thing to Jesus, but Jesus always replied with the word of God back to Satan. You, 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 you have to focus on the word of God. You have to stop listening to the words of the devil, to the, to the strongholds in your mind. You have to stop listening to the world and, and seek God. But there's no life, there's no, there's no story that, it, that, is, that, is, that is saturated in sin that God cannot turn around for good. Because the worst of all sinners, such as Paul, I mean, think about Paul. Paul was the worst of all sinners, killing saints. And yet God used them. God used them for, for, his, for his purposes. So you can't say that God can't do the same for you. All you have to do is seek him and offer him you, yourself, your life, your body, your soul, your spirit, all of you. You know, love God with, with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. If you learn how to move in love and, and, and repent and, and seek God, you will find the joy that you're seeking in your life. You will find the happiness that you're seeking in your life. You will find the peace. A lot of people think that 
this world has some type of peace that it can offer them, but, but there is no peace within this world without Christ. Because Christ is, is eternal, it's that everlasting, that water does that, that doesn't dry. Because Jesus gives the living water, the living water that lives within you, that keeps you happy every single day of your life. But the devil will, will try to make you think that God cannot use you, that you're not good enough, that you're not, that you don't have the value, that you don't have the worth. But God tells you again and again that he loves you, that he's crucified his son for the world. Yeah, Romans 5, 8 tells us that, you know, God demonstrates. He doesn't just say that he loves us, but he demonstrates his love for us. And this, while we were still in sin, Christ died for us. Wow. Uh, that is beautiful. So the truth of the matter is, is that God absolutely loves you. And he can use you. He has a will and a purpose for your life. So I, when we look at Colossians, when we look at um, chapter 2, we look at verse 19, it tells us about the, the head of, of the body, the body of Christ, and how we're all connected, and how the body grows, and how when we find Christ, when we seek God, uh, he tells us our purpose, his will for our lives, his, our, our lives, his will um, for, for what we're going to do with our lives, um, his will for, for our romantic life, our financial life, our family lives, our daily lives, our daily bread. I mean, God, God is very, very focused on the statistics, on the, on the specifics, on the, on the minor details of our lives. He's, he, he even cares about what you get for your daily bread. Is, is your spirit getting filled with the word? Are you seeking him with all of your heart? Are you seeking him with all of your soul, your mind, your strength? Are you loving your neighbor? The thing is like we as Christians, we have to move within love. Speak to others about love. Speak to unbelievers about love, the love of God for humanity. Because the, God's love is perfect. His will is perfect. And no one, no one, can say that that God doesn't love them. Because God has said again and again and again that he loves the world, he loves all humans, and he wants them all to be saved. The things like some people just, they, they won't listen to the love, they won't allow the Holy Spirit to move. But you have to invite him, you have to accept him, you have to know that he's your father and that he cares about you and that he wants to save you from the darkness of this world. So, you know, God can use whoever he wants. Don't say that he can use you. Because the minute that you accept him, the minute that, that you offer him your life, the minute that you accept Jesus Christ, is the same minute that God starts to use you for his purposes. And when, when you let God's will uh, be done in your life, It's just extraordinary, the things that he'll get done. And God is real. We, we all will meet him. We all will stand before him one day and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. And, you know, bow. Everyone will bow. Everyone will proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's just a fact of the Bible. That's just a fact of life. Whether you believe in it or not, it's just truth. Jesus Christ is truth. He is light. He is the word of God. And the word says that God uses whoever he wants, from Genesis to Revelations, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, to the prophets, to David, you name it who he wants, when he wants, from teenagers to adults, from little children to people um, you know, who are in, in their 80s and 90s, you name it. God uses whoever he wants, when he wants. Even Nebuchadnezzar, he, he thought he was a god. He thought, you know, he thought he was all powerful. And yet God brought him to his knees at a point he had to look up and, and, and submit to God. It's like, God, you win. You are God. 
and there's nothing, no one above you. So be humble, cultivate humility in your life and seek God. Let him use you the way that he wants to use you.